We'll go to the book of Isaiah this morning. Chapter number six. I have to say it is good to see everyone in the house of the Lord today. And um, it's good to have all the way from Ohio, David Johnson and family with us are traveling through. From Brother, Brother Pamer's church in Ohio. And uh, he's a very well renowned speaker in our movement. And uh, honored to have them this morning. Praise God. It's good to see everyone in the house of the Lord today. And uh, the Lord has a special word for us today. Um, we, can, we can read the word of God. And we read the Lagos. We read the written word. And uh, it is bread to our soul. But there is also a today word, something that the Lord is speaking to me today, a fresh word. And uh, it's that fresh word that will give me life in my spirit, that will give me strength in my heart. And um, I'm, I'm just going to preach what I, what I felt, um, begin to feel the Lord speaking to me about. And uh, it may take, I don't know how long, if it will take me a long time to land the plane or not, but uh, we'll, we'll, we'll get around to it. I, I kind of feel um, there's, you know, nuggets in here and there. Like Brother Shelton says, we, it, it, it uh, may be scrambled eggs at first, but we'll have an omelet by the time we're done. Um, but let's read the book of Isaiah, chapter number 6. I'm going to change my title on you, so just type it in once I, once I do it. In the year that King Uzziah died, I saw also the Lord sitting upon a throne, high and lifted up, and his train filled the temple. And his train filled the temple. Praise God. I'm going to preach from this title for a few moments this morning. How long is your train? How long is your train? I want you to put your Bibles down. Let's ask the Lord to help us this morning. And open our hearts to receive the word of the Lord. I believe somebody's going to leave encouraged in the Holy Ghost this morning. Lord Jesus, I take dominion and authority over discouragement, over frustration, over defeatism. And I lose the victory of the Holy Ghost in this house this morning. Lord, somebody has come in here weary, but Lord, they're going to leave with strength in their spirit. Somebody has come in frustrated, but they're going to leave with peace in their mind. Somebody has come in here with all kinds of problems, but, Lord, you are the problem solver. And, Lord, you're going to give us strength when we leave here today. Somebody's come in here defeated in their mind, but there's fresh victory that's going to be imparted in their spirit. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, Lord, I declare the victory of the Holy Ghost in this house this morning. I declare the victory of the Holy Ghost in every life under the sound of my voice. In the name of Jesus Christ, I pray. I take authority over weariness in the name of Jesus, and I lose strength in the Holy Ghost today. I want you right now, before we go any further, whatever it is that you brought in this morning, I want you to take that captive and begin to declare the word of the Lord right now. Lord, in the name of Jesus, you may have come in sick, but you're going to leave healed. You may have come in tired, but you're going to leave with fresh energy in your spirit. You may have come in confused, but you're going to leave with clarity today. In the name of Jesus, it may be dark in your world, but there's illumination that's going to happen this morning. I declare it in the name of of Jesus. Clap your hands one more time. Hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise God. You can be seated this morning. Hallelujah. I've, I've kind of been, I've been teaching in this area and I, and I will make this statement and then kind of move on. Uh, on Wednesday nights, I've been talking and, and, and teaching through uh, the kings of the Old Testament and the divided kingdom. And um, this, this particular scripture, the book of Isaiah, takes place in the portion of the Old Testament that is, uh, that is mainly full of kings that were not walking according to the word of God. That is full of, of kings that 
uh, were living according to uh, idol worship, and they had led Israel and Judah uh, against the ways of the Word of God. And uh, even in the midst of the darkness, there were a few good kings that were scattered amongst them uh, throughout the Old Testament in the land of Judah and Israel. But the Bible says that the, the prophet Isaiah, as, as the word of the Lord comes to him and as the anointing of the Holy Ghost is upon him to speak and to see things in the Spirit, he says, in the year, in the year that King Uzziah died, I, I, I saw also the Lord sitting upon a throne, high and lifted up, and his train filled the temple. He, he recognized who was on the throne and who was really in control, even though the land of Israel and Judah, the kingdoms, were, were full of sin and idol worship and all of the craziness that was going on. In the midst of the darkness, the man of God in that time saw something different than what was displayed before his physical eyes. He, he began to see in the realm of the spirit and what he saw was not that his problems or what was happening in Israel and Judah was a small matter, but what he saw was the king of kings, he saw the Lord high and lifted up and his train filling the temple. I, I believe it's important to understand at the beginning of this message this morning that what I will say in the next few moments is not meant to minimize your problem, but what I'm going to do is maximize the greatness of our God. I have not come this morning to be disrespectful to any scenario that may have presented itself to you this morning, but I've come to magnify the name of Jesus because he is still on his throne. He is still high and lifted up and his train fills the temple. Does anybody believe that this morning? Does anybody believe that this morning? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The Lord wants to convince us of that. The Lord, once we begin to magnify who Jesus is and we begin to see that he is still on his throne, that he is still high and lifted up and his train fills the temple, it, it will give us a fresh perspective of everything that we may be dealing with. I, I, I've not come to tell you that your circumstance is easy. I've not come to tell you that your scenario should be a piece of cake and, and you you should just be able to get on with life and forget about your problems. No, everybody under the sound of my voice has some type of irritant in your life that seems to consume you and overwhelm you at times. I've not come to tell you that it's just an easy thing, but I've come to tell you in light of who God is and in light of his power and his majesty, in light of the fact that he is high and lifted up, that he's still sitting on the throne. That's what I've come to preach to you you this morning. Clap your hands and give him praise right now. I've come to preach to somebody that wants hope today. I've come to preach to that. Maybe it's just one individual that you've been in the darkness for a little while. I've come to preach to you for those that want out of the darkness, that want, that want a way of escape, that don't want to live in defeatism this morning. That's who I've come to preach to, to you today is those that want God to do a work in their life. What is given to us is, is a small snippet of factual history in Isaiah 6 and 1. In that, he makes reference to kingship in the last phrase of this, skirt, of this verse. It says, and his train filled the temple. It first says, he is high and lifted up. He said, he says, the Lord sitting upon a throne. Only kings sit upon a throne. He was high and lifted up, and his train filled the temple. This may not be brand new knowledge to you, but I believe the Lord wants to, somebody to understand this this morning. That in, in the days of the kings, when they would go to battle with an with an enemy, with another king, and they would ultimately be victorious in battle. 
they were ultimately victorious when they put the king to death, when they killed him. And what the, the victorious king would do is he would take his sword and he would cut off, a, cut off a piece of that king's garment. He would take it home with him and he would attach it to the end of his garment. And these, when the Bible says his train fills the temple, what it's referring to is a, the train of a king or the garment that he wore that had these detached pieces of past victories that he had sewn on the end of his garment. So when he walked into the throne room of his kingdom or when he walked about in the city of his authority or dominion, and people looked at the garment that he's wearing and they saw the length of his train. Without ever having a conversation with him, they knew how many battles this particular king had won. They could look and see this detached piece to that detached piece to that detached piece. And so what they understood is if a king had a very long train, it meant that this king had a long history of not just battles, but he had a long history of being victorious in battle. So when Isaiah 6 and 1, what Isaiah saw was that he saw the Lord sitting upon his throne. He was high and lifted up and his train filled. It filled the temple. It wasn't just one or two or three victories that he had. But his victories were so much that the temple was full. Uh, they, they, were, they were so much that they weren't able to be counted. They were so much that it, it would take a little while to kind of visually grasp the amount of victories that the king of kings had in his life. With that in mind, the Bible tells us a few things about the temple. Now first, let me establish the fact that at this particular time in history, it was during the time of the law of Moses. And the law of Moses said that for any given sin or any, any given scenario, their sacrifice to the temple. You would sacrifice whether it be sheep or two turtle doves or an ox or whatever, whatever the sacrifice may, may be. Maybe you were bringing a sheep, and along with that, they would bring a grain offering. They would bring a wave offering or a heave offering. And there were so many different things that they would bring up to the Lord into the tabernacle, into the temple. And uh, they, would, they would go through the ritual of, of, of spilling blood in order to atone for sin or to take care of the sin problem. But the problem was, is there was ultimately no victory. There was no victory over sin with the blood of bulls and goats. It did not bring any type of victory into their life. It did not solve the problem. It never gave them the power to overcome sin. It just temporarily dealt with it. See, that blood was not powerful. The blood that they brought to the temple that they spilled at the brazen altar, it was not, there was no power in that blood. It just temporarily dealt with the problem and they were okay until next year. They were okay until the next scenario. They, they were okay for a temporary period of time. They needed blood that was powerful. They needed blood that there was power in in order for them to gain victory over their sin. And so God, we read in the, old, in the New Testament that ultimately the law of Moses was a failure. That ultimately it did not accomplish what God ultimately wanted to accomplish in the lives of men and women. It was incomplete. Actually, you read some parts of the New Testament. It tells us that the New Test or the Old Testament actually caused men to sin because it named those things that they were not supposed to do. And if you are familiar or willing to admit the, the fact of how we as humans are, what happens? happens is, is as soon as we're told not to do something, we come up with this idea, 
It's like you kind of, uh, raising your kids, you kind of teeter on, should I tell them not to do it or just ignore it altogether? Because if I tell them not to do it, I know what's going to happen. That's human nature. And that's what the law did. The law only existed within that realm of the physical human nature. It just told us don't do this and don't do that. And so the blood that was spilled at the brazen altar, even though it was for a time period, it did not have the power to give me victory over sin. There had to be something greater than the blood of bulls and goats to give me victory over sin. 1 Corinthians 15 and 54 through 57 says, So when this corruptible shall have put on incorruption, and this mortal shall put on immortality then shall be brought to pass the saying that is written death is swallowed up in victory O death where is thy sting O grave where is thy victory the sting of death is sin and the strength of sin is the law but thanks be to God which giveth us victory through our Lord Jesus Christ it was the blood of Jesus that gives us the victory over sin. I, now that I have the blood of Jesus applied to my life in the waters of baptism, I no longer have to go back and do the ritual that they did in the Old Testament because now the blood of Jesus is applied to me. And when the blood of Jesus is applied to my life and I am filled with the Spirit of God, I now have victory over sin. You know why he, why he can give us the victory? Because he's the owner of victory. Just like you own that car that you came in, you've got the keys, you are the owner of that vehicle, right? Yeah, in, in the same sense, he, he, he literally owns victory. The devil does not own the victory in your life. Your circumstance is not the owner of the victory in your life. Some of you are acting like the circumstance that you're going through or that you're dealing with holds the keys to the victory in your life. That, that you are submitted and, and that situation has the dominion over you in your life. I've come to tell you this morning that because of Jesus Christ, because of his authority and his dominion, because he is the owner of victory, because he paid the price for it and he rose from the grave, the Bible says, says oh death where is thy sting oh grave where is thy victory because he defeated it I don't have to listen to the voice of the adversary I don't have to listen to the voice of condemnation in my life I've got to have the blood applied to my life and when I have the blood applied to my life the blood of Jesus Christ I can have victory I wonder if we can lift our hands right now to the Lord and love him lift your voice to him So I want to ask you this morning, how long is your train? You see, the plan of God from the very beginning was not that he would just possess the power himself. But from the very beginning, he saw the book of Acts. He saw the outpouring of the Spirit of God. And that his presence would not just dwell in a tabernacle and then in a temple. He saw that through the years of time, it ultimately would happen that his spirit would dwell in this temple. Because he ultimately wanted to not just be God with us, but he wanted to be God in us. What we see in the tabernacle, what we see in the temple, in Solomon's temple, ultimately would be made manifest and we would be the temple of the Holy Ghost. Now going back to, to, to Isaiah chapter 6 and verse 1. The Bible says, I saw the Lord sitting upon a throne high and lifted up. And his train filled the temple. So within the temple there was this long uh, uh, attachment, a robe. 
that described all of the victories that the king had obtained that is there resident in the temple. That if you go into the temple, you're going to see all of the victory that is there. You're going to see this victory and that victory. I, I wonder if, if in your mind right now you could go back uh, over the past few years and say, I remember when I got victory over depression and I remember when I got victory over jealousy and I remember when I got victory over lust and I remember when I got victory over alcoholism and I remember when I got victory over gossiping and I remember when I got victory over this temptation and over that temptation. I remember when I was bound by bitterness but I can attack my wife of the Holy Ghost but I cut off the head of that enemy in my life and, and I attached it to the train and now in the temple of my spirit there's victory after victory after victory after victory I'm going to tell you the way that God ultimately designed it was that in this temple that there would be this victory and that victory that there's so many victories that you can stop and say I remember when I struggled with that and I remember when I struggled with that and I remember when I struggled with that but, uh, but because of the power of the Holy Ghost because of the blood of Jesus Christ I got the victory I don't care what you're dealing with or what you're going through. The way that God designed it is that in your life, in your spirit, in your own walk with God, that you would encounter that king in that city, in that battle of that particular situation in your life. And then after, after battling in your spirit and going to an altar and praying and, and, and making up your mind that whatever besetting sin was in your life, that you were going to eradicate it, that after a while there came a time where you gain victory in that area of your life and then you moved on and God said okay I'm not done with you yet there's something else I've got to do in you and God brought something else to your mind and then all of a sudden you realize there's another area of my life that I've got to get under the blood there's another area of my life that I've got to conquer there's another area of my life that I've got to destroy there's another area in my life that doesn't line up to the word of God and so I went to prayer again and I submitted in my life again to God and I kept on praying and I kept on seeking God and after a while God gave me the victory because he is the owner of victory because the victory belongs to him yeah. Yeah. Second Corinthians 2 and 14 now thanks be unto God which always causes us to triumph in Christ and maketh manifest the savor of his knowledge by us in every, in, in, in every place. 1 Corinthians 6 and 19. What? Know ye not that your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost which is in you, which you have of God, and ye are not your own. This temple right here, the way that God designed it was that you would not live in defeatism once you are filled with the Holy Ghost and baptized in Jesus' name. No, once you have the blood of Jesus applied to your life, once you are full of the Spirit of God, what He has given you is His Spirit and His power and His authority and His dominion in order to drive out everything in your life that would keep you from living for God it's not the will of God for you to live defeated every day but it's the will of God for you to wake up every morning and say in your spirit this is the day that the Lord has made I will rejoice <laughs> hallelujah the apostle Paul understood something the Apostle Paul went through some junk in his life. He went through some persecution. He went through some times that, that were beyond what we could really even imagine in our 21st century Western civilization. He went through some things, but, at, but as he writes in 2 Corinthians 4, 8 and 9, he says, We are troubled on every side, yet not distressed. We are perplexed, but not in despair. Persecuted, but not forsaken. Cast down, but not destroyed. The only way that you can go through difficulty in your life and be and not be destroyed and not be cast down is because I can still have victory in the midst of a storm. I can still have authority and dominion in the midst of a dark time. 
I've come to preach faith to somebody this morning. You may have gotten so used to your problem that you've accepted this is the way it is and it's the way it's always going to be. There are some circumstances that we cannot change, but I've come to maximize and to magnify the power of God this morning. I wish somebody would preach with me right now. I've come to magnify how good God is. I've come to magnify and to maximize the power of the Holy Ghost. I know you may be in the midst of dark times, but you You've got to understand that God is greater. That God is greater. That God is greater. Somebody lift your hands right now as high as you can get them and lift your voice to him in this house. Hallelujah. 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 Some of you have got to rise up in your spirit and say, I am going to defeat this. God has not allowed things to come in your life to destroy you, but he wants to add another piece to the train that is in your temple. He wants to add more victories to your life. He wants you to to overcome those things in your life. I've come to tell you that he is still high and lifted up, that he is still on the throne, that his train fills the temple. Hallelujah. Somebody pray in the Holy Ghost right now. Let it flow like a river in this house. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I'm talking to people this morning that the enemy has tried to destroy you through life circumstances. That the enemy has tried to destroy your faith and he has tried to frustrate you. He has tried to press you down and after a while it seems like what's the use anymore? I've come to preach to you this morning that your victory can be as simple as opening your mouth and beginning to magnify your God. And at the the end of the day you've got to make up your mind Mind, which is bigger, your scenario or your God? You've got to make up your mind what is bigger, your situation or the King of Kings. You've got to make up your mind either your scenario is in control or he is still sitting on the throne. God help us this morning to understand when in our mind we begin to magnify our, our scenario. When we begin to place our scenario high and lift it up. When we begin to put it high above everything else. That's not what God intended. No. If we'll put God in his proper place then I promise you in the midst of turmoil somebody desperately needs to hear this this morning. Your soul depends upon hearing this this morning. That that situation wants to swallow you up and wants to cause you to think that God has abandoned you and God has forsaken you. No, God's wanting you to use his power. He's wanting you to use the spirit that he gave you, the blood of Jesus that is on your life. He's wanting to add to the victories in your life. Lift your hands one more time. Lift your voice to him. I've come to preach victory. God is more powerful. I'm not I'm not trying to pull teeth for somebody that wants to live in defeatism. I'm try, uh, the Lord is talking to somebody that, that's in the middle of it, that's going through it. But you've been desperately seeking a way out. I've got your answer. I know that God may not fix your problem today. God does not fix all of our problems. He doesn't do it. But we can be victorious in the midst of our problem. But you've got to open your mouth. You've got to begin to declare the wonderful works of the Lord. You've got to make up your mind that victory is mine. Victory does not belong to my adversary. 
Victory does not belong to my situation. Victory does not belong to that scenario that is unfortunate that I don't have an answer to. Victory does not belong to that circumstance that is beyond my control. No, victory belongs to the Lord. Oh, death, where is thy sting? Oh, grave, where is thy victory? Oh, yeah, the grave doesn't have victory anymore. Death doesn't have victory anymore. And if death and the grave don't have victory, then the situation in your life does not have victory. I wonder if somebody would stand to your feet right now and throw your hands in the air as high as you can get them. Come on, lift your voice to the Lord. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Oh, Lord, we bless your name. I will not be defeated. I will not be cast down. Hallelujah. I may be troubled, but I'm not distressed. I may be perplexed, but I'm not in despair. I may be persecuted, but I'm not forsaken. I may be cast down, but I am not destroyed. I've come to preach to somebody. God wants to give you victory. Somebody lift your voice and sing. Today is To get. Oh yes, victory. Today is mine. Victory is mine. Victory is mine. Victory today. Oh yes, I. I've come to sing victory. Today is mine. Now I'm going to ask some of you to get courageous this morning. If you want victory today, I want you to come as close to the front as you can. If you don't want it, that's fine. If you don't need it, fine. I need you to pray with somebody else because there are some folks that are going through stuff that is trying to swallow them up. But God is here to pump faith into somebody's spirit this morning. God is here to minister to somebody in this house right now. I wonder if you'd lift your hands as high as you can get them right now upon the authority of the Word of God and the power of the name of Jesus. I lose victory in their hearts and in their minds. I want you to just begin to magnify God right now.
I want you to reach over and lay your hand on somebody this morning and pray in the Holy Ghost right now. Come on, let it be released in this house like a river. Hallelujah. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. There's victory in this house. There's victory in this house. I will not be destroyed. I will not be cast down. in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of your sins if you're going to have victory in your life you must have the blood of Jesus on your life your sins must be remitted if you want to be baptized this morning Brother Lockwood here can take you back and get you baptized the water's warm we got everything you need to get baptized if you want what God has for you today I want to tell you God wants to do it in your life this morning God wants to fill you with his spirit with the evidence of speaking in other tongues and give you victory over everything in your life that would try to destroy you. I wonder one more time you lift your voice and sing, Victory is mine, victory. Victory today. Victory is mine. I told Satan. I told Satan to get me behind. Victory is mine. I wonder if we could just lift our voice and praise him this morning all over the room right now. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come on, somebody lift your voice. God's doing a work in this house. Oh, hallelujah. 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 Hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 
Those things that seemingly drag you down. The cycle. It's the will of God for there to come the place where you get victory over that area. And in the corners of your mind, you've got your trophy case. Well, you can look back 5, 6, 10, 12, 15 years say, I remember when I struggled with that. And then I defeated it. And then I went on, then my next battle was this, and then it took me a little while, and by the help of the Holy Ghost, I defeated that, and I defeated that. And you can go back in your, in, in your mind and your memory and remember everything that the Lord has done in your life and see all of the victories that you have won because of the power of the Holy Ghost. I'm going to tell you, God's doing a work right now. Let's love Him together. Hallelujah. 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 In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, hallelujah, 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 Jesus, hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Bless the name of the Lord. Bless the name of the Lord. Praise God. God's church is a victorious church. God's not coming back for a church that's kind of limping across the finish line. She's going to be a glorious church. Praise God. One more time, let's lift our hands to the Lord and love Him all across the room this morning. Thank you, Jesus, for your word. Thank you for your power. Thank you that you've already declared the victory in our life. Hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Oh. Hallelujah. Praise God, praise God, praise God. We're going to come back tonight and have a good move of the Holy Ghost tonight. Prayer at 530, we'll see you tonight. God bless you this morning. You can be dismissed in Jesus' name, amen.